Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. Wonderful to be together for another day and another week. We're going to be turning through to the Gospel of Mark again, having a look at chapter 7. But before I read that as usual, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another week, another day in your word. And we pray that you would bless it to us by your Holy Spirit, that we might feed on it that we might be benefited and that we might see Christ and honour him in our hearts as Lord of all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 7, verse 31 to 37. Then he, that's Jesus, then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf, and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him, and taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and said to him, Ephathah, that is, be opened, and his ears were opened, his tongue was released. And he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Jesus has done many miracles in the Gospel of Mark. Many of them. And so it's no surprise that we find crowds rushing to Jesus. It's interesting because it's in the area of the Decapolis. And I wonder if you can remember the last time we heard about the Decapolis. Uh, It was when Jesus drove out that demon, Legion, from that man. Remember the story where the Legion, the demon goes into the pigs and the pigs run off the cliff. And then what does Jesus do? He sends the man out and tells him to go and tell your friends and family what's been done for you. And he goes about the cities of the Decapolis. And so here we are back again in the region of the Decapolis. Now this probably explains why when he gets to the Decapolis, there's this huge crowd of people chasing him. Because of course they've seen and heard of what this man has done. And obviously this man has fulfilled the task that Christ sent him to do quite well. He's faithfully gone and told everyone of what God has done for him. And so now the crowds come to him and they bring to him a specific man. A man who is deaf and has a speech impediment. So you could imagine he's probably been being deaf from birth. And so he's never learnt to speak properly. Never learnt to speak clearly at all. So his tongue doesn't work. If you've ever met a person who's been blind, uh, been deaf from birth, they generally, sometimes they learn to speak, but very often they can't. Especially back in the days. They would often always be deaf and dumb. However, these things don't limit Christ, do they? No, they don't limit Christ at all. So... They bring this man and and they appear to have a bold faith. They say, just lay your hands on him. They're begging him. Lay your hands on him and heal him. Do it now, please. And it's interesting what Jesus does. Jesus is not interested in putting on a show. No, he is interested in saving sinners who are bound up. And so Jesus, Jesus lovingly draws this man away. He takes him into the private. Why does he take him into private? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. One is in order to draw faith out of this man. You see, it would have been very easy for the man, while surrounded with the crowd, for him to assume faith and to assume that Jesus could do it. Although maybe he didn't have any idea what was going on since he was deaf, I'm not sure. But either way, this man, in isolation, would be forced to now believe in Christ for himself. Because there's no crowd to rely upon. It's only him. The other thing I think that he's doing and bringing the man by himself is to ensure that there's not a whole lot of hubbub. But he has the chance to work this special miracle in a special way without any questions. And we see something very interesting in the way we do it and the way he does it. He puts his fingers in his ear, he spits on the ground, he touches his tongue. You're like, what on earth's going on? 
But you've got to remember the man's deaf, he can't hear. So I think one reason Jesus is doing that is because he's, as I said, he's drawing faith out. So he does it in a way that the man can understand. If he just stood there and talked to him, the man might have no idea what he's talking about. But rather, he looks at the man and pities his state and filled with compassion, he reaches out to him in a way that the man will understand. And then, and then he sighs, he sighs at the man. So the man would be able to visibly see him go, <sighs> everyone can see what a sigh looks like. You see, he's painting salvation. He's painting healing in a way that the man can see. But he's doing something else. Jesus is sighing at the effect of the curse, the effect of brokenness, the sadness of the whole situation. And so we see the heart of Christ filled with pity for broken image bearers of God. And then having, having sighed, he says to the man, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And now that he's been given this glorious tongue to declare, what does Jesus say? Don't tell anyone. Why? Because Jesus is more concerned. Jesus is more concerned with fulfilling his father's mission than the praise of men. He sets the man free and he says, don't go and tell everyone. I have a mission to complete in God's due timing. So be quiet, tell no one and let me do his work. And of course, what happens? Well, Mark tells us the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed him. And the crowds were astonished. The crowds who believed he could do it are now astonished that he actually did it. You see, we see something really beautiful. I think a really great reminder for us in this last little verse here. Have, have we not received something far more glorious than the healing of a tongue? And the healing of deafness. You see, Jesus fixed this dumb man. Jesus fixed this deaf man. And, and he could not control himself. But, but all he could do was run out and proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ. The healer. The wonder. The merciful. The compassionate. Zealously he proclaimed it. What about you and I? Have we not received eternal life? Have we not had all of our corruption washed away? Have we not received the Holy Spirit? How much more should you and I zealously proclaim Jesus Christ? How much more should we be astonished at what Christ has done? How much more shall we declare he has done all things well? You see, this deaf man is a picture of us spiritually. We spiritually were deaf and dumb and yet have been given ears to hear the gospel, hearts to believe and mouths to declare and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. How much more should we be boldly proclaiming him, loudly declaring the name of Christ? Well, the question is, are we? Has the salvation of Christ brought about a zealous proclamation of his name in our life? Well, only God can be the test of that in your heart. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do pray that you would help us to proclaim the majestic saving power of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks very much. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon.